Welcome to Sheringham, one of the most popular seaside towns on the North Norfolk coast. Having started out life as a small fishing village, Sheringham has grown and grown over the years into a delightful destination. And on this walk around the town centre today, we'll explore the sights and stories of Sheringham, as we visit the beautiful Heritage Railway Station, explore some of the oldest buildings in the town, stroll along the bustling High Street, and so much more. All of that is to come as we take a walk through the heart of Sheringham. But we begin our walk on the town's seafront, where we can gaze straight out across the vast expanse of the North Sea, a body of water that's long played a major role in the ups and downs of this town's lengthy history. Leading down to the sea here is a slipway littered with a small collection of fishing boats. The sea, of course, having long provided the people living on this piece of coastline with plentiful schools of fish. As we mentioned, Sheringham started out life as a small fishing village. But despite being the industry that sustained the local population for so long, fishing has always been a perilous activity, particularly out on the often violent and freezing waters of the North Sea. Over the centuries, scores of local fishermen have lost their lives whilst working out at sea. But from the early 19th century onwards, a number of lifeboats have been deployed to rescue those who've got into trouble on the water. And in this shed overlooking the coast, we find one of the most important lifeboats in this town's history. As you saw from the sign, this is the Henry Ramey Upcher lifeboat, which was originally built nearly 130 years ago in 1894. Locally known as the Fisherman's Lifeboat, this huge vessel operated for 41 years until 1935, and in that time it saved the lives of at least 193 people. But what's especially notable about this boat is that it was a community lifeboat, crewed by local fishermen and donated to the town by the wealthy Upcher family, who lived in the splendid manor house known as Sheringham Hall, just a couple of miles inland from here. Though no longer in use, the fishermen's lifeboat remains on display in its shed at the top of the West Slip here, and it stands as an important symbol of the local community, as the second community lifeboat that operated in the waters off Sheringham. Its predecessor, the original fisherman's lifeboat, was named Augusta, and it was built all the way back in 1838. And like the Henry Ramey Upcher that came after it, it saved the lives of many fishermen out at sea. Nowadays, as we can see, Sheringham is only home to a small handful of fishing and crabbing boats. But back in the 19th century, there were as many as 200 operating in the waters just off the town all of whom relied on the town's lifeboats in the event of danger. Although there is more to the history of Sheringham's lifeboats than the fishermen's lifeboats, and we'll talk more about that a little later on. However, let's now make our way away from the West Slip and take a stroll along the coast, which is lined here by imposing sea defences that tower over a small shingle beach. Sea defences that have been built to bear the brunt of vicious storm surges, which have in the past devastated the town's seafront. Back in January of 1953, before these modern defences were built, a violent storm surge launched seawater up onto the land, and it even washed over seafront houses and hotels, while a large section of the seafront promenade that we're walking along now was swept away. Combined with the perilous legacy of local fishing, Sheringham is a seaside town whose history tells us the devastating power of the sea. But despite that, this town in the modern day is a really rather lovely place to visit, with a large pebble beach a short distance to the west from here, and a bustling modern promenade today, which follows the path of a coastline that's rich in history, where the UK's biggest mammoth skeleton was discovered, and which was more recently one of the first victims of the wars of the 20th century, as Sheringham here was targeted by German Zeppelins in 1915, making it the first place in Britain to be attacked by a Zeppelin air raid in the First World War. Here, meanwhile, we encountered the Two Lifeboats pub, a seafront pub which actually began life as a fisherman's church in the 18th century, 
but which is today named after the town's first two lifeboats. One which was operated by the RNLI, and one by the community, as we've already explored. In a few moments we'll visit Sheringham's other former lifeboat house, once operated by the RNLI. But just here we encounter an unassuming but fascinating piece of local heritage. A gun that may be more than 400 years old, said to have been used to defend this stretch of coastline all the way back in the Spanish Armada of 1588. Although some suggest that this gun is actually slightly newer, dating from the Crimean War of the mid-19th century. However old it truly is, the gun, which now stands just a stone's throw away from the coast, has also rather interestingly lent its name to this street, Gun Street, which leads us past a number of delightful white houses towards a small open space, which is also home to a wealth of history. Now as you might be able to imagine, this area of Sheringham is the oldest part of the town, having once been known as Lower Sheringham which was a small fishing village and the counterpart to Upper Sheringham, located a short distance inland and which was more agricultural. Upper Sheringham still remained slightly distinct from the modern coastal town, Lower Sheringham having grown into what's simply known as Sheringham today, which is home to a proud maritime heritage. Here we find ourselves on a small open space known as the Lifeboat Plain, which takes its name from this building, the old RNLI lifeboat house. Opened in 1867, this building was designed to house the town's second lifeboat, named Duncan, which was operated by the RNLI alongside the fisherman's lifeboat, Augusta, which was housed a short distance away at the top of the West Slip. As we can see, this old lifeboat house has now been converted and restyled as the local Oddfellows Hall, although the RNLI does still operate a lifeboat in Sheringham which is housed in a more modern building down at the other end of the promenade from here. Given their significance to the local community, Sheringham's lifeboats have been a part of the fabric of the town for the best part of 200 years. While here on Lifeboat Plain there also stands the old boathouse, a former boat building workshop which is now a private home, daubed with a beautiful mural here commemorating its heritage. Boats built in the house would historically be taken out to sea across Lifeboat Plain, past the Crown Inn that we can see just opposite, a popular seafront pub which has been in existence roughly on this site for around 250 years, making it possibly the oldest licensed establishment in all of Sheringham. That however is a title which is met with fierce competition from elsewhere in town, in fact, just here, the Wyndham Arms, nestled away in the heart of the old fishing village, can also claim a history of at least 215 years, first recorded all the way back in 1808. But once upon a time, pubs like this wouldn't have just been bustling with fishermen, but also smugglers, as Sheringham was historically an area where people illegally bringing goods into the country from the likes of the Netherlands would land and they'd likely use the local pubs as their main places of business to sell the goods on. Meanwhile, just opposite the pub, a blue plaque here marks the site of the very first bomb which landed on Sheringham in the First World War, that being the one dropped from a zeppelin on the night of the 18th of January 1915. Here meanwhile, another blue plaque marks the site of what was once upon a time the medieval chapel of St Nicholas a small chapel that served as the main place of worship for the small fishing community that once inhabited this windswept piece of coastline. Originally built around the time of the 15th century, no trace of the chapel remains today, and it may have only been in use for a few decades after it was originally opened, although the chapel's neglected ruins did remain standing in the heart of Lower Sheringham until as recently as the late 1820s. It was around that period, however, that things began to change, because of course it was the 19th century when the fishing village of Lower Sheringham began to evolve into the coastal town of Sheringham that we know today. Here, we've made our way out of the oldest part of town onto the High Street, which is less reminiscent of a small fishing village and more akin to a typical seaside resort, busy with people, cars, arcades, shops and more, as this main road stretches inland away from the coast. Pretty much everything in the town from this point onwards is less than 200 years old, 
built during that boom period of the 19th and 20th centuries. But in order to understand exactly why Sheringham was able to grow by such a magnitude, we need to look at a map to get a better idea of where it fits into the region's geography. As we know, Sheringham is situated on the North Norfolk coast, just over three miles to the west of the popular resort of Cromer, and about 20 miles to the north of Norwich, in the heart of the county. Historically, this stretch of coastline was greatly isolated from the rest of East Anglia, let alone the rest of England. But come the Industrial Revolution, improved methods of transport soon made Sheringham and its neighbouring coastal villages more easily accessible to people from elsewhere in the country. This was important, as it allowed Sheringham, long home to bountiful stocks of fish and other seafood, to export its catches to the fast-growing populations of inland towns, first by road, and then at the end of the 19th century, by rail. In a few minutes we'll visit Sheringham's beautiful old railway station, but in the heart of the town here, we find the iconic Clock Tower, which was originally erected in 1862, as the venue for the town's main supply of drinking water. Originally, this structure was simply designed as a shelter above the fountain, and the clock was only added a few decades later in 1903. But it remains in operation today, while the old water supply no longer does. As the town grew in size, the fountain here developed into the focal point of Sheringham's local community, a place where people would understandably be visiting daily. But it's thought that even before the clock tower, this was also a prominent place in the old village of Lower Sheringham, possibly the site of the old stocks and pillory, where local criminals were held as punishment for their misdeeds. While the main centre of population in the old village was indeed down by the coast, there were a smattering of houses that stretched inland, in fact as far as Upper Sheringham, a couple of miles away from the sea. Though Lower Sheringham later evolved into the much larger settlement, centuries ago it was Upper Sheringham that was the more prominent, home to the historic parish church of All Saints, which served all those who lived in both villages. And that meant that fishing families originally had to walk from here about a couple of miles there and back, before the construction of St Nicholas's Chapel here and then the Fisherman's Mission Church that later became the Two Lifeboats Pub. Today, the Robin Hood pub, and many more, line the path of what's known as Station Road, which serves as the town's bustling main street. Now, interestingly, Sheringham's town centre is well known for its wide array of local, independently run shops and businesses, which do a roaring trade during peak times in the summer. Despite being quite a large town by Norfolk standards, Sheringham is only home to around 7,000 people and so it retains a rather pleasant atmosphere, which is bolstered by the lively activity of day-trippers coming to visit the seaside as well. We know that the fishing industry brought Sheringham to prominence in the 19th and early 20th centuries, but like many other places around the country, the industry rapidly declined in the decades following the Second World War, leaving the community to pivot towards tourism as a main source of income. With a large pebble beach, a long promenade, and plenty of places to shop, eat, and drink, there's more than enough to enjoy on a day out in Sheringham, while on Saturdays you'll also find a popular market that's held just at the top of Station Road here, which is always busy with activity all year round. Looking resplendent today with its red, white, and blue bunting, the lively Station Road of course takes its name from the fact that it leads up from the centre of town towards the railway station. But rather unusually, Sheringham is today home to two separate railway stations, which are actually located across the road from one another. The railways first arrived into Sheringham in the 1880s, providing an effective method for the transport of fish and other goods from this town to the rest of the country. But the modern Sheringham station, which we can see just up here on the left, was actually opened much later in history, in 1967. Today it's the final stop on the line from Norwich via Cromer, and one of the easiest ways into the town if you're visiting from further afield. However, this is not the original Sheringham station, because just across the road here we can see how the railway line used to carry on, as trains rolled into what was Sheringham's original Victorian era station. And when you think about Britain's historic railways, this is exactly the kind of image that comes up. 
because the old Sheringham station now exists as one of the country's most splendidly preserved heritage railway stations. Home here to the old gates and signal box, which was originally built all the way back in 1906. Historically, the signal box here stood in a different position on the platform of the old station, which was opened all the way back in 1887, and which served the growing town of Sheringham for 80 years until 1967, when the British Rail built stop just across the road was opened in its stead. Nowadays, with the exception of a small handful of trains that actually travel across Station Road, the modern Sheringham station and the Heritage station are entirely separate. And as well as the seaside, the historic railway station today stands as one of this town's main attractions. Just outside the station here is Sheringham's main bus stop, the place to come if you're looking to hop on a service further along the beautiful North Norfolk coast, with buses running all the way through stunning villages like Weybourne, Clay next the sea and Blakeney, towards the town of Wells next the sea. But if you don't fancy travelling by road, you can actually catch a train from this historic railway station a little way down the coast as well. That is thanks to the North Norfolk Railway, a heritage railway which operates historic trains that run along the old railway line to the town of Holt, about six miles to the southwest. And all journeys depart from this beautifully restored platform in the heart of Sheringham. A trip along the whole line from Sheringham to Holt usually takes about 25 minutes, with stops just outside the historic coastal village of Weybourne, and a request stop at the tiny Kelling Heath Holt. And you can make the trip on one of a number of beautiful historic trains, including majestic steam trains and wonderful old diesel locomotives, one of which we'll see pulling into the platform here at Sheringham in just a few moments. A trip along the North Norfolk Railway is an absolute must if you're in the area, with services operating from April through October. But even if you're here in the winter, you can still enjoy the splendour of this wonderful heritage railway station, which is decked out with historic station posters, a wealth of authentic railway memorabilia, and where you'll also often see conductors in classic uniform strolling up and down the platform. During the peak season, the platform is always a hive of activity, which brings back memories of the golden age of the railways, when the vast majority of people used trains to travel to and from Sheringham. And we're rewarded here with a truly wonderful sight of a historic diesel locomotive pulling into the platform. This train is an old British Rail Class 101 locomotive, which was originally built in Birmingham back in the 1950s but nowadays it serves as one of the many trains operating along the highly popular North Norfolk Railway. The historic resort of Sheringham here is certainly the main destination along the length of the railway line, but Holt, the historic Georgian market town at the other end of the line, is also worth a visit, as is the quaint village of Weybourne along the way, which is home to a sprawling beach, a characteristic Norfolk windmill, and the impressive ruins of the medieval Weybourne Priory. But even if you don't get off the train on your trip on the North Norfolk Railway, there's still plenty to see, with the beautiful countryside littered with dazzling red poppy flowers along the route, this heritage line affectionately known to locals as the Poppy Line. Now, the Poppy Line that was built through this area in the late 19th century was a major development in the history of Sheringham. And as we've mentioned, it helped to transform this small-scale fishing village into a major town that doubled as a popular seaside resort, which attracted people from inland for decades. By the turn of the 20th century, more than a thousand people had come to call Sheringham home, a dramatic rise in the local population that led to the need for a range of new, modern facilities including new houses like the ones we're walking between on this street, which is known as St Peter's Road. The road takes its name from the large church that we can see at the end, which is another of the buildings that were constructed in the 19th century to meet the needs of this town's fast-growing population at the time. Built in 1853, St Peter's Church here is one of the newer churches in this area of Norfolk but it was designed to provide the people of what had become the much larger settlement of Lower Sheringham with their own parish church, rather than requiring them to keep making the journey inland to the historic church of All Saints in Upper Sheringham. 
Situated on what was once upon a time the edge of the old fishing village, it's been suggested that St Peter's here may occupy the site of the original chapel of St Nicholas, although that was more likely positioned in the heart of the village on Wyndham Road, as we saw earlier. But it wasn't just this large Victorian church that was built here on the periphery of the growing town. Just across the road here, we can see Sherringham's old town hall, which was built a little later on in 1912. And unlike many other town halls around Norfolk, this one was built of majestic red bricks, which was a symbol of the modernity of a town that had truly come to cement itself as Sherringham. And having strolled through the history of this fascinating town, from its origins by the coast to its more modern centre here, we've now reached the end of our walk around Sherringham, a truly wonderful Norfolk destination. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're looking forward to making your own visit to Sherringham sometime soon.